Okay, so let's say we have a polynomial with nice, friendly, rational coefficients. But let's suppose that that polynomial is irreducible, so we can't break it down into a product of factors uh, that will help us to understand what its roots are. If a polynomial with rational coefficients is irreducible, if we can't factor it, then that must mean that none of its roots are rational numbers. These are going to be the polynomials that we're most interested in trying to find solutions for, roots for, uh, because they're the ones that are somehow the building blocks of all polynomials with rational coefficients. In this video, we'll look at taking that first step from a polynomial which has no solutions among the rational numbers to finding some solution to that polynomial in a larger field. Now, the fundamental theorem of algebra guarantees for us that the polynomials with rational coefficients will definitely have roots in the field of complex numbers, so this really huge, big, giant field that we're actually not that interested in. What we'd really like to be able to do is to build a field which is a little bit bigger than the rationals and which has a root of that polynomial which is irreducible and therefore didn't have a root before. In this video, we'll look at simple extensions of the rational number field. First, from the point of view of trying to construct a field in which a polynomial has a root, and second, to look at constructing a field which has all the rationals in it, as well as one irrational number that we specify. So our goals in this video are, again, to answer the question, how do we take the rational numbers and introduce them to a new irrational? For example, the root of an irreducible polynomial. But when we do that, we want to introduce the rationals to a new irrational friend as efficiently as possible. In other words, we want to let the square root of 2 through the door, but we don't want to let through the square root of 5 or the square root of 3 unless we need them. So how do we enlarge the rational number field by just a little bit in order to create solutions to polynomials that we didn't have before? First of all, again, if our polynomial with rational coefficients is irreducible, then that means that it has no rational roots. For example, t to the fourth minus 2 qualifies as irreducible because it satisfies Eisenstein's criterion with the prime number 2. But if none of the roots of p are rational, then what are they exactly? First of all, we want to understand the process, given an irreducible polynomial, of constructing an extension field of the rationals in which that polynomial has a root. So if t to the fourth minus 2 has no roots among the rationals, then what field does it have roots in? For example, where is this real fourth root of 2, as well as its opposites? What field can we find these in that's larger than the rationals, but hopefully not as large as the whole complex numbers? And secondly, we want to do the other process. Say I have an irrational number which belongs to the complex field. How can I construct an extension field of the rationals which contains that number, but hopefully not too much else? In other words, if I have something like the square root of negative 3, in what field can I find that number that's larger than the rationals. And don't just say the complex numbers, wise guy. Because as it turns out, the interesting examples of extension fields in our course are much smaller than the rational numbers, uh, than the complex numbers are. So here we're going to talk about the definition of a field extension. I call it the quickest route to getting an answer. A field extension of a field F is a field E together with a monomorphism from F to E. In other words, we start with a base field, call it F, and we construct a larger field, an extension field, that we'll call E. So we'll call F the base field and E the extended field. And the idea is that E is somehow bigger than F. But the language of monomorphisms here is suggestive because in general we can't think of F as exactly being a subset of E, but we can think of somehow finding a copy of F inside of E. So in other words, this monomorphism, the job of it, is to be a function from f into e such that the image of f is a subfield inside of e. As an example, suppose that we have f being the rational numbers. And so we have a number like negative 7 twelfths that belongs to f. Well, does negative 7 twelfths belong to e necessarily? Well, not necessarily. If e is the rationals with the square root of 2 thrown into them, then we can't think of negative 7 twelfths as belonging to e exactly. But we can think of the element negative 7 twelfths plus 0 radical 2 as belonging to E. In other words, this monomorphism I is kind of drawing a subtle distinction between the elements of the base field and the elements of the extended field, which may have more degrees of freedom than the elements of the base field did. But usually, when the context is clear and when we're comfortable with the idea of a monomorphism, we will think of F as being a subset or a subfield 
of E, although it's not exactly the best definition for what it means to be a field extension. So here's a small example. Let's take the smallest finite field that there is, the Z mod 2, so it has 0 and 1 in it, and the polynomial t cubed plus t plus 1. We can show that that polynomial is irreducible over Z mod 2, and the quickest reason that it's irreducible is that it has no root and it's a cubic. So what we'd like to do is somehow construct a field that extends f and in which this polynomial has a root. So here's the construction. The construction is first, we're going to take the polynomial ring on top of f. In other words, we're going to look at the set of all polynomials with coefficients from our base field. That's a pretty huge ring. Even for the smallest field possible, z mod 2, this is going to be a ring with infinitely many things in it. And we know it's a ring because it generally polynomial rings don't have division inside of them. The only things in polynomial rings that are invertible um, are generally the polynomials of low degree. So first thing we do is construct this polynomial ring. And so that at least gives us some more elements to work with that might be roots of this polynomial. So how do we force p to have a root inside of this polynomial ring? Well, all we have to do is take p, t cubed plus t plus 1, and just declare that that element is equal to 0 in this polynomial ring. In other words, we're going to take this element 1 plus t plus t cubed, and we're going to identify it with the element 0 inside of the polynomial ring. What that means, functionally, is that we don't have to write 1 plus t plus t cubed. We can just make it 0. But as soon as we set that polynomial equal to 0, we have other consequences as well. 1 plus t plus t squared plus t cubed, because three of those four terms are going to add together to give me 0 now, is going to leave me with just t squared. So that polynomial gets identified with t squared, so we don't have to write it. 1 plus t squared plus t cubed, we can show, identifies with t squared plus t. So we can reduce all of the third powers of t to lower order. And therefore, we can reduce all of the powers higher than 3 of t into lower order. And so when the dust settles in this quotient of the polynomial ring by the principal ideal generated by p, what we get is a field with eight elements in it, the elements that you see right here. And inside of this field, the polynomial p has a root. Why? All we have to do is answer the question p of what was equal to 0. And by our declaration, that is filled in by t. In other words, by construction, we have created a set, it turns out this is going to be a field, that extends f and which contains a root of our irreducible polynomial p. So there's a small example of what it would look like. What were the main features? Again, we can show that this set was a field that extends f, and secondly, that it contains a root of p. Here are the elements again of z mod 2, a joined t, so the polynomial ring, quotient by the principal ideal generated by t cubed plus t plus 1. has these elements in it. And again, when we're thinking of this as being a monomorphism that defines a field extension, we're going to think of 0 and 1 not as 0 and 1, but rather as 0 plus 0t plus 0t squared and so forth. Uh, that situates a copy of f inside of e. And again, the important feature for our purposes is that this bigger field now contains a root of this polynomial that we didn't have before. So the general process is build the polynomial ring of f, and then take your irreducible polynomial and just declare that it, and therefore all of its multiples, are equal to 0. Inside of that quotient, you will have a root of p by definition. So here's a bigger example to round out this half of our videos. Let's take the uh, rational numbers this time instead of z mod 2, which is a more common construction for us. And let's take the polynomial t to the fourth minus 8 which is an irreducible polynomial. And we'd like to, again, construct a field which is extension of q and in which p has a root. So we're going to start, as we did before, by looking at the polynomial ring with rational coefficients, which now is going to have even more elements than we could ever possibly hope to draw. So I'm going to sketch in those that have orders 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 with some dots in here. So this is some gigantic polynomial ring. But then the second step is we want to take that polynomial t to the fourth minus 8 and just declare that that polynomial is equal to 0. So we're going to identify the element t to the fourth minus 8 and the element 0 in the quotient. And of course, if t to the fourth minus 8 is equal to 0, that means t to the fourth is no longer t to the fourth in this quotient. It's equal to 8. And if t to the fourth can be rewritten as 8, then that means that all the higher powers of t, like t to the fifth, can be written as things like 8 times t, and so forth. So everything of order 4 and higher we can rewrite 
in terms of lower powers of t. And therefore, this quotient has only t's, t squareds, and t cubes. And by our construction, the element t is a root of the polynomial t to the fourth minus 8.